It is the end of 2019, and we are going over the biggest real estate stories and the biggest local stories of the year. Tune in to Tool Time right now. I'm Tom Tool. She's Jess Lyon. Holiday week, end of the year, end of the decade. We're going to talk about the biggest stories that we've seen in real estate and locally in 2019. So we'll start off with the, the local angle. So I've got my stuff. Jess does not know what it is. I'm sure I'll be right at the end, as <laughs> usual. Uh, so what is your biggest local story of 2019 in the Philadelphia area? What do you think? What we were reviewing, I was reviewing all of our YouTube videos, and we talked about a lot. We covered a lot. We covered the Hyperloop. We covered the oil refinery explosion. Um, but my biggest one, I really think, is going to have to be the, the jewel. We talked about the e-cigarettes, the vaping issue. And the reason why I think that is the biggest of the year is because it's still going on. The death toll is over 52 right now, and it's climbing. And the reason why it's so concerning to me is because, from my observation, um, it's affecting the youth a lot, and they don't understand, and it seems like they don't care about the effects. So I think it's a real big issue, especially um, in our area. And I think it's something that we should continue to follow up on. Well, so what, what, I, what I observed about that story is that there's, there's a problem with schools. And I think that that's the biggest issue. We and talked I, about and it I don't, in school. I don't, I don't know what, what steps have been taken to correct that. I mean, have you said, like, I mean, and part of it is like they're going in the bathrooms and like they're you can be smoking so this thing. Yeah. And it doesn't smell. I mean, I, so I have a friend of mine. You know him. And he has stopped vaping, thank God, because I was – on his butt about it and I saw him in conferences vaping in like the expo center you know who you are if you're watching so does Nick I see him nodding his head and <laughs> nobody noticed or cared and this is I'm like a place to find out <laughs> it's not it's not a big I'm just not gonna say who We're it is on, on camera today. here I wouldn't do that and so I, I do see the challenge there and I, I the only way I could see schools really really cracking down on this is if they have harsher enforcement like Hey, you're gonna get suspended for a couple days, that or has like to be it. you're gonna you're gonna get expelled if this continues. Because I know there was kids that would smoke cigarettes occasionally when I was in high school, which is much longer ago than you were, which is fine. Yeah, and much it was longer. a big <laughs> deal. It was longer, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> it was a big deal, and there was a lot of repercussions there. So, you know, then the challenges too. I mean, the way people vape. I mean, you could probably be vaping, you know, marijuana or something like that too without anyone knowing. So I. I the schools have to enforce it. And I don't I don't know how the enforcement happens. I mean, I've been to my son's elementary school. I don't see that happening there. It's elementary school. That's great. It, well, <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, but, like, the, the, the schools are insane. Like, there's yeah. so many kids there. And I, I don't know how, unless they put, like, cameras in or something like that, I don't know how, how uh, effective or uh, – possible or logistically possible it would be to to enforce this i think more awareness needs to be made of the effects because like i'm saying uh, from what i've seen and what i've heard from friends and kids that are a little bit younger they they don't know what the effects are they don't really care and they're going to do it anyway um so i think there was there's a commercial i think it's like truth.org or something that was really telling you what the effects of smoking was or are back in the day and that kind of stopped. I would say they need to do that for these um, cartridges that are not. Well, they're more regulated. concentrated. It's the issue. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the problem. And, and people don't realize how much they're smoking versus like a cigarette. You're kind of done, right? Uh, yeah, it's so, like nothing. But yeah, that's the biggest one for me. How about you? So that is not the biggest story of the year. I've got a couple that I'm going to qualify. The most exciting and innovative one is clearly the Hyperloop. Uh, that to me would change everything in the Northeast and in the country. Yeah. The challenge I see with that not being the biggest story is that all they got was an approval to research it. It's not like anything's Nothing happening. Has started yet. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, I don't, I, this will happen Taking faster time. than people think. Uh, if you f follow Dr. Uh, Peter Diamandis, I mean, he's clear in the next couple of years we're going to see things change dramatically with flying cars and sensors and all sorts of things going on, which I agree like with. Well, this is going to be like, <laughs> if you watch Back to the Future too, that was like already happened by now. I don't, we don't have any of this stuff. So, the most exciting and innovative one is the Hyperloop. To me, the biggest story, and this is from talking about this with people outside the area, is the safe injection sites in Philadelphia. That, to me, right. is just crazy. Where if you ever watch The Wire on HBO, possibly the well, – people, and it, it, it's considered one of the best TV shows out there. Mm. They actually had this in the show, and it's, it's about inner-city Baltimore and 
very similar challenges that they deal with. Uh, that's the biggest one because it, it, I don't know that it's actually helped. And now they're allowing all these people to have safe injection sites. The murder rate in Philadelphia is up. Uh, the, there's all sorts of corruption going on in City Hall. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more concerned with what I've seen happen with the city during the current stewardship of the mayor than what happened with Mayor Nutter. And all these problems they used to have, now they're kind of back. Like happen. per capita murder rates up. And you have these safe injection sites. And now there's corruption with City Hall where their friends are buying lots under value and the city's in a bunch of debt. So I don't know if this is – that one story led me to my, my conclusion that Philadelphia's in bad shape right now. And unfortunately, I don't see that changing anytime soon with the current leadership. So it's kind of more of the same, unfortunately, for a city government that has struggled – with the exception of, and I'm not a political guy, but I mean, these are, you know, people getting killed in safe injection sites. Scary. Pretty crazy scary, stuff. Scary. So unfortunately. You live in the community. I live down there for, I mean, I, I hear you. So unfortunately, the biggest story is that there's all these problems back in Philadelphia that we thought were going the other way. And it's all like outside Center City. Center City's vibrant. It's yeah. fun. It's a great place to go. It's expanding into Northern Liberties. Into, well, it's already in Northern Liberties. Fishtown, Port Richmond. Um, Kensington, to a certain extent, Kensington, South Philly. Yeah. So that's th- th- that. Unfortunately, to me, is the worst story of the year, and also the biggest one because it's still happening, and nothing's. And I, I don't feel like people pay attention enough attention to it. Okay. Well, we're on opposite sides there. Yeah. So, is, I wor- say we is got the murder or youth. the jewel? Right. All right. So that's the question here. <laughs> okay. How about so, um, real estate? Real estate. So there is only one story in real estate right now. And we talk about it almost every week. And it's what is going on with the tech innovation in real estate, specifically the war that's going on right now that a lot of agents don't even know about, where you have Zillow, and Zillow's the story, right? Zillow 2.0. They're generating a seller lead every 1.25 seconds on their website. Never done in the industry. They have 36 million people a month going to their website. That was at the beginning of the year. I'm sure it's even higher than that now. Oh, yeah. And... What they are doing is they're taking all the agents that pay them money, and if you're not converting for them and you're not answering the phone at an appropriate rate, and it's all database, which I love from a business owner perspective because so many people talk from intuition, what they think they know, what's worked in this one scenario is going to work all the time, rather than what does the data tell you about how things convert. So Zillow continuing to be the Google of real estate and to be the dominant company out there because a lot of these brokerages right now we talked about how like keller williams is suing compass Mm -hmm. and all this other stuff what i see happening is all these guys are fighting on one side so every brokerage and then the tech side is on the other and but zillow is the tech side Mm -hmm. right even compass is saying they're well we've got this great website and we're doing all this stuff Uh, you know they're laying people off in their tech company i mean this stuff is happening keller williams has this crm that nobody's seen yet that's still not ready and it probably doesn't even work yeah and Zillow is just continuing to grab market share, and they are not focusing on a brand. They're focusing on what's best for the consumer, which is the biggest challenge in real estate right now. So no question in my mind, Zillow is the biggest story. And I'll take it one step further. If you see what's happening with their corporate structure right now. So Richard Barton's the new CEO. That was right. one of our stories. Spencer Raskoff out. Now he's teaching somewhere. Um, all their leadership has been replaced Mm -hmm. and what usually happens with like a sports franchise when they hire a new guy to come in to run the company they get rid (laughs) of everybody and they bring in their own people to set themselves up to take their vision and the vision from zillow has gone to we're going to be the name in real estate very clearly and that that's that that to me is the only story in real estate right now if you're talking about anything else you're not paying attention to what's going on well, I'm with you 100%. That's, I was going, again, through all of our videos, and it was just Zillow after Zillow after Zillow, everyone coming after Zillow, suing Zillow, and Zillow was just continuing to do what they did. And uh, I think it was the article about the Zillow um, Unlock conference or whatever mm-hmm. it was where they were saying that they want to be the Amazon of real estate. And they pretty much, like you said, are the Google um, for real estate, especially for buyers. And I think that Zillow offers is just going to get even bigger this year, um, expanding to in over 21 markets. It's absolutely crazy. So I'm with you. Zillow is the talk of 2019, and it will be for 2020. Well, you look at even some of the other stories we talked about, like iBuyers. Mm-hmm. Zillow's an iBuyer, right? right? Zillow, they awarded a million bucks for someone. They paid someone a million dollars to make their algorithm better at valuing properties. And they had all these people compete. 
So, I mean, genius move on their part. Great, great move. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen Barton in person speak. I, I see what's going on. I see what's happening with their corporate structure. So all that, that tells me is they are positioning themselves to continue to dominate the real estate industry. And if you're not paying attention to that, like, and, and agents out there, you're, you're not going to beat them. You can win in your own market. Like, mm-hmm. you, can, you can win locally. But the people that want to fight them or the Stop Zillow guy, I don't even remember his name. Um, I mean, that, that's obviously died down. Like, they are the only story in real estate right now. No question about it. Yeah, and I like how they're positioning the agents who are doing the work, putting in the work, and uh, the premier agents. I like how they're positioning them and really helping the consumer get in touch with the right agent. And all the agents watching out there, if you're saying Zillow's the enemy or all, all this all this talk, you need to get informed, number one. And secondly... Zillow is a lead pillar for a real estate agent, for a team, for whatever, for a brokerage in some cases, whatever whatever the structure is. There are other ways to go out right. and do business. My point is Zillow is trying to become the only way to buy and sell real estate. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's Christmas, right? So, you know, I did all my shopping this year on Amazon, sitting on my butt, on my couch. I forgot yeah. to order presents for, like, nephews and, and kids. You know, I ordered it last, last night. Last night. So, <laughs> and we're filming this right before the holiday here. So the, the whole point is Amazon went that way. The Amazon started out selling books. Mm-hmm. So these companies change dramatically. And, the, you know, the, this is the only story in real estate right now. So definitely with you 100% on that one, Jess. All right, cool. Are we doing an inspirational quote today? I, if you got one, I, I came. I do. It's okay. the end of the year. Talking about reflection. From uh, Margaret Meg J. Wheatley. She is one uh, a best-selling author. She says, Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, creating more unintended consequences and failing to achieve anything useful. So read that to me again. Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, creating more unintended consequences and... Failing to achieve anything useful. So, so let's look at the first part of the sentence there. It says, Without reflection. And we just did a year in review. Mm-hmm. So we reflected on what the biggest stories were of the year. And you, know, you, can, you can always debate either side of that. That's not the point here. It seems like there's an obvious one in real estate. So we reflected on that, and you know, that, that's advice for a lot of agents out there. They need to understand how they're going to deal with, with Zillow, for example. So mm-hmm. when you reflect and you look at past results or past performance, that's the only way to chart the future course. And then also what disruptors are going to be out there. And unintended consequences is pretty interesting to me because – there's always unintended consequences when you make a change. Like I, we've seen that here, just with some of the changes we make on a day-to-day basis, having a growing company and trying to in, in, embrace a startup mindset. So, I'm trying to read this quote as we go here, Jess. So, you need me to zoom. No, I, I have bad eyesight. So, That's unintended consequences. Right there. That was nice. Thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> unintended consequences when when you're when you're walking blind and don't have a plan. Like I mean, then there's stuff that you don't even know. You're not ready for what's going to happen. You're not considering all the possible outcomes. And then you're kind of running around in circles. So really, you know, looking at the year in review and analyzing it and using data like we talked about, that to me is... Data guy. Uh, well, it's it's it's, it's data. It's, it, it, it helps you run, run an effective business if that's what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Or have, you know, if you look back at your year and you ate like crap all year and you gained a bunch of weight, well, maybe you need to change your diet, right? Yeah. Or you didn't exercise. And you gain, so I mean, or your wife's ticked off at you because you didn't spend any time with her. Maybe you need to start spending some more time with her, right? Uh, I mean, these are just examples. Right. And I feel like a lot of people naturally at this time of year try and reflect and look at what had happened. And you can look at really great things that happened for you and continue to do things that will lead to successes like that. Or you can look at, you know, maybe some places where you need to course correct and change what you're doing. Um, and maybe, don't get so down on yourself about that, but just realize that that's a part of growth and do course correct and change something. Um, but if you don't look back, and I really feel like that's the essence of what this is saying, if you don't kind of do a review of your year, you're not going to learn anything, you're not going to grow, and then you'll get stuck. So it is important to really take the time, schedule the time, and reflect. We'll catch you guys next week.